Um, before uh, giving the microphone to our uh, speakers, uh, let me introduce them to you. So Diane, Diane Le Duc um, is a full professor in the Department of Didactics at the University, uh, University du Québec à Montréal, specializing in higher education, and she's director of the Observatoire Interuniversitaire sur les Pratiques Innovantes d'Evaluation et des Apprentissages, um, and co-director of the Réseau Papier, Pédagogie, Architecture, Art et Paysage. She's mainly interested in pedagogy practices, teacher training, and post-secondary learning assessment, particularly in artistic contexts. Um, initially trained in architecture and the arts, her professional career reflects a multidisciplinary approach. Frédéric Doré is a doctoral student in education at the Université du Québec à Montréal, a student researcher at the uh, Observatoire de Pratiques Innovantes et Évaluation des Apprentissages, and coordinator at the Laboratoire des Recherches sur l'Innovation Pédagogique et l'Apprentissage en Enseignement Supérieur. He's, his work focuses on um, post-secondary evaluation, digital techno pedagogy and communities of practice. So on this, I will give the floor to the speakers. Thank you, Nicole. So hello, everyone. I take the floor first with uh, Frédéric right beside me. Well, he's He's far away, but he's right beside me. So today what we will do is present uh, Neo to you. It is a game, a board game. And uh, the goal of this game is to innovate in assessment evaluations. So what we want to do is share with you how we created this game and where it is at now. And perhaps even at the end, we will be able to comment on where it's headed next. So here we can switch uh, slides because we've already been introduced. Unless you want to introduce yourself anew. No, it's okay. Okay. So here is a plan of our conference. So um, we will speak about the genesis of NEO, uh, how, you know, it came to be, the aims of the game. Then Frédéric will speak about the whole central aspects of, of the game, how you play the game, the players, the installation, um, how, you, how you set the game up, and um, how the play session unfolds. And then after that, I will speak about benefits and uh, uh, value-added uh, by the game. So the uh, game was thought of uh, while I was teaching and I had been wanting to integrate some um, playful activities in my classes. I had been integrating such activities for a while already, but then I, I thought, you know, I could create a game to support my teaching. The occasion had not really arose though to really make something concrete of it. I always had however, in the back of my mind, the hope of finding the conditions to be able to create such a game. So, um, I found that uh, evaluation tasks really lended themselves well to um, creating this type of a tool. So I asked uh, Alexandre um, and Edith, uh, who were uh, doctoral students, um, to help me with this. They are um, part of the APIVA team. Uh, Frédéric joined us in the last steps of the uh, creation of the game, um, but altogether we uh, targeted and created this game to innovate in matters of assessment and evaluation. So also we quickly realized that we needed help actually to come up with um, with a real game because we're not specialists. You know, Alexandre is a great player. He actually has huge collections of board games and video games. So we did have a great interest, but we didn't have that much concrete knowledge and we didn't have um, a great budget either. So we, the three of us, we went to the Serious Play Conference that took place in Montreal in those years. Um, I don't remember what year exactly, but we went just to try and find people and companies, you know, organizations that could help us uh, create uh, a game. So that's where we met Creo, uh, whose director is Caroline Julien. And 
they wanted to work with researchers. So we wanted to create the game to support what's happening in research, of course. Um, but, and, and these uh, game uh, creators, designers, uh, Guillaume Mercier, Louis-Philippe uh, Belle-Rose-de-Mers, Myriam Tremblay, Wim Brunix, and Mario Gauzin, um, well, they, they worked with us and we, uh, started creating uh, this uh, game. It took three years. We would meet quite regularly every few weeks. And Guillaume was the one to create the game, really. He was um, sending us a lot of homework. Uh, and Frédéric will explain this a bit more. But we had a lot of homework to do. He would come back to us and, and ask us uh, to provide things. So this was the genesis, basically, of the uh, project, how it was born. and. Um, here, let me see, just one minute, I'm going to turn off my email because it's, okay, here. Um, so what the steps were um, are the following, so design, production, prototyping, and distribution. So we uh, settled for a board game because we didn't have the means to produce a video game, basically. That's where the decision came from. But when we met Guillaume, it was very nice because we would come up with all these ideas and then he would just propose some um, mechanisms, right? Uh, some mechanics for the game, some ways of doing things, and then we would react to his proposals. So we had many ideation sessions. It was quite a laborious uh, first because we wanted to come up with a game to innovate in evaluation methods, right? But the thing is, there's not a lot of research in uh, evaluation innovation, right? So there is uh, alternative assessment methods. Uh, there is research done in that, but there's not that much research regarding what innovation and evaluation or assessment is. So we had a lot of work to do at that level to provide um, to provide some input to Guillaume in his uh, designing, his coming up with mechanics for the game, right? And this really led us to have to define what we wanted and what we didn't want. And then the production uh, step, that was more uh, Guillaume's um, part, but he would come up with cards, you know, uh, real cards, but he would write on them uh, by hand. And that helped us understand um, better what the uh, game mechanics were. Um, and uh, then uh, we had some uh, we had some mock-ups and we were able to uh, request some adjustments and uh, then we were able to launch promote um, and uh, present research so the neo game well is quite simple actually but to come up with this uh, simplicity, as I have mentioned, we worked quite hard. We worked very long and very hard to come up with this way of doing things with the game. And we had pretty much from the start uh, the idea of bringing players around the table to uh, have them um, uh, come out of the of the of known paths, right, and do things differently. And because a lot of times people who teach, we don't have a lot of time to really share regarding assessments, alternative assessment methods, etc. And so we do on uh, sometimes, but but we, we don't do it enough. And so this game um, was meant to bring people together and actually share concretely about assessment methods. And this is a risk-free game. This is a very safe space to share about um, um, methods, assessment methods. Uh, so, uh, Frédéric, it's uh, your turn. All right, great, great. You will speak about the players. All right, so uh, games. The game is intended for any um, player involved in the education uh, system. So practicing teachers, future teachers as well, right? I used it uh, for the undergrad classes that I teach and it worked very well. It is a very good um, tool for teaching and learning for future uh, teachers. So a very wide public. 
through broad public, no matter the discipline, no matter the level of experience. That's very important because it's going to uh, stimulate um, collaboration, discussion, and it really breaks down some walls, right? It really makes people uh, come out of their silos and uh, think in terms that go beyond their just their own discipline because people who uh, teach French will speak to people who teach French and people who teach sciences will speak people who the people who teach sciences etc cetera, etc cetera. and also um pedagogical advisors uh, could also play I I imagine right yes of course of course we did have a session for pedagogical advisors uh, we uh, gave pedagogical advisors a game and they went and uh, guided some sessions um, with teachers in their own schools, right? Uh, so uh, directors as well, principals of schools, that is a very good uh, target for this game. It is a very good way for them to establish some dialogue across different levels of their organization so uh, you can play uh, between from four to six players or you can uh, form teams of two and play um with from six to twelve uh, players so if you have a colleague that you know that you already work with or someone you don't even know you can team up with them and uh, play so now I will explain a bit what the games look like physically, how you set up the table to play this game. So it is a quite a simple in terms of content manipulation. There are there's not many accessories actually. Uh, there, those are too expensive. You know, like all the little fun things, little toys. You know, uh, the little coins, the little. That's way too expensive. So, well, you know, it's a good thing that we didn't use them because it makes the game more simple actually. And also, it is a game that really brings you to a cognitive overload quite fast. Um, it is rare, you know, that you have an occasion that you have to process so much pedagogical data so fast in such a, a short amount of time. So just having this, this playful uh, space with only cards is, is good. We try to make it as simple as possible. So when you receive the box, when you manipulate the game physically, you can see this is the box to the left here. Um, it contains one uh, booklet so you can play. Um, you have six uh, game boards. Um, you have one pick tree and 333 cards and it is not just by coincidence that there is 333 cards so many cards right because the idea was for a very large number of assessments uh, to be able to be conceived through the game um, because I think that out of all the people who played a Neo, and I was the main tester, right? I never had a, a round that was similar from one to the next. And I've, I I think that I'm the person who played Neo the most times. And I've never had an experience that was the same from the last one. So it always really brings people to rethink assessments and evaluation. So we have six notepads also included in the game because you need to plan, you need to organize um, during the game. So some people have everything in their head. They're able to think think things through uh, very easily just in their mind, but it's very rare that people don't have to write anything down. Um, at some point in the creation of the game, we had 800 cards, right? Um, and we didn't realize it. And it was Guillaume that would come up with his numbers and say, by the way, we're up at uh, 800 cards and it's going to cost a lot of money to print, the, print them out. Um, so think of the cost. So then we'd think about it and, and, and bring the number down. Now we have 333 cards. It looks like a lot, but when you think about it, it's not that many. When you actually play the game, uh, you see that we really need those 333. And actually, I'm going to ask Zian right now. Can you explain why we call this game Neo? Oh, it's inspired by the Matrix. No, no, not at all. Just joking. Actually, it was hard to find the name. We um, thought of many of them. Neo, first of all, because there is this idea of something new, right? Novelty, something innovative, something that doesn't exist yet. And also there was the E for evaluation and the O for observation. So new evaluation observatory. Um, we thought that it was 
it was a nice reference to that. But but coming up with a good game name is not easy. There are so many games that already exist um, that in the end you come up with a name and you see that uh, it already exists. So um, I came up with this name on a while I was on a flight on a plane somewhere. And then I, I came off the plane and I texted the team and proposed this name to them and they agreed. So it's as simple as that. Um, I'll answer a sales question also. I think that I somewhat answered it, but it's not necessarily desirable to play only with teachers from the same discipline. Uh, it really depends what you're trying to do. If you want to have a better in um, uh, intra-departmental uh, collaboration, then you can do that. But if you work, for example, if you work at a CEGEP, you usually uh, collaborate within departments, so you can use a game for that, but you can actually also use a game um, to play with uh, colleagues from other disciplines, other departments to see, to question the ways that you do things and break silos. Um, so, uh, here you have uh, the player board on the left and then the pick tray on the right, so where you draw your cards. And uh, we have a very nice game board. So uh, the player board is designed to uh, reflect pedagogical alignment. Uh, this concept was brought up in 96 by Bing. So it is a precept of coherence between planning um, according to your learning aims, what you want to meet as an objective at the end of the year and your teaching strategies, how you prepare your um, your students to reach these objectives and then what situations you will put your students in so that they can demonstrate their mastery of uh, the knowledge and of uh, the tools and techniques that were thought to taught to them. So um, on the left you see objectives in blue and then strategies, teaching strategies in purple and at the bottom evaluation modalities. So to the right, you have what we call actually uh, in yellow there at the right, you see the classroom. And this brings another level of difficulty. If you are very innovative with your uh, assessment methods, we will ask you to take into account also um, uh, limitations and difficulties in learning. So for example, physical um, obstacles, uh, some emotional difficulties that you may have to take into account to have assessments that are not only inclusive, but also inclusive. So this brings another challenge uh, for designing assessments. There are other uh, elements included to the left of four characteristics of an innovative uh, assessment. We're going to see it later with the cards, actually. We need to go a bit a bit faster because the time is running fast. We're very passionate about our game, so we enter into it with great detail. Um, so these are the uh, objective cards. Um, so the teaching strategies and uh, objectives are usually linked to taxonomies. So we have the Bloom taxonomy, the emotional taxonomy. Um, there is a psychomotor taxonomy also. For example, if you teach theater or any discipline that has a manual or technical uh, component, you could use this taxonomy to think of your assessments. And also the um, basic taxonomy is uh, the characteristics Enable for the interpreter. So there is oral, there is written, there is a class at time, in person, remote. Uh, there are many characteristics uh, that correspond to things that you may know well or not so well. So there are also um, other teaching modalities, for example, using video, going to the museum, etc. etc. So there are five uh, cards of these and 330. 
three uh, potential for cards. Uh, so there's really a whole variety of boards that uh, can um, get set up. And um, this uh, board uh, game also has some action cards. So um, my colleague has there you go. So, for example, if my colleague sets up her cards in a way that is very characteristic, very representative of things that how she does them in her class, in her classroom, uh, then I can use action cards to come and challenge the way that she does things to prompt actions on her parts. And so I would go to the vote, actually. So the vote is another mechanic aspect that uh, is used uh, to um, prompt uh, your colleagues to uh, critically question what they do, right? So the idea is not to produce assessments in a silo, but also uh, to think of your assessments based on your colleagues' feedbacks. Um, so there is assessment in the game about assessment, so it's very meta, but uh, that's uh, the way that we wanted things to be. Uh, so uh, the procedure, the duration is between 90 to 120 minutes. And um, if you want to take more time, for example, if you have to. So usually you only need 90 minutes, but if you have more time, for example, you know, you have a break, 120 minutes, you can, you can go up to 120 minutes. And so, there is a creative phase where you create, you come up with your assessment, and then there is a voting phase where you present your assessment to your colleagues and you need to defend um, defend your assessment methods in front of your colleagues and they challenge you. So the creative phase is where you draw a card from each category. Um, so you're gonna see your cards and you're gonna ask yourself, okay, my God, what am I gonna do with that? Um, so you do have time to think about the things uh, so you're going to draw an action card. This is the um, part of the game that allows you to change your board or to modify all of your colleagues' boards uh, also. So uh, that is very interesting because it really prompts you to uh, remain... Uh, to, to, to adapt, right? And to always be ready to adapt. Um, you uh, will... So someone can um, prompt you to act to modify your board game, or you can propose your evaluation straight away. And 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 there you go. Propose your evaluation to the rest of uh, your um, of the players. So uh, the creative phase is where. Actually, we had a photographer that came and took some pictures of the game as we were playing it. So that's how it can look. Um, the uh, boards are all. On the table, there is no hidden, um, there are no hidden cards. You can always look at what your colleagues are doing and you can actually consult your colleagues and ask them to reflect on what you're doing. So you can consult each other as you go. Um, so the point is to maximize uh, interactions with the action cards because there you are, you have the possibility of disorganizing your colleagues' work and um, then they will have to react. Also, um, there are portfolio cards, uh, all kinds of cards that are very useful to uh, create some new assessment modalities. Um, the second phase that we're talking about is a vote phase. So um, this meets the second objective, the goal of uh, generating discussion. So we have cards that go from one to three points. It's not one point per criteria, whether present or not. Actually, it goes from one to three. And uh, there is no um, evaluation grid. It is very simple, actually. It is a game mechanic that is really there to generate some discussion. And the um, criteria that we're looking at for innovation is whether this is a novelty. So you can, um, but you also have to take into account that the novelty will bring some added value for learning, right? It's not just come up with something new to come up with something new. It has to have some value. So for example, 
you have to ask yourself if uh, the students will be able to learn something and assimilate it long term through um, the method that you're using. Also, you need to um, look at if whether the method proposed brings awareness if it generates a positive change if there is a before and an after right and um, if uh, could i ask add something already regarding change right the idea is risk taking also actually it is something that really would modify substantially my practices you know is there really something here that is the uh... is this something that generates uncertainty um you know because uncertainty can really feed an innovation also so are we taking risks um also uh, this has to do uh, with introspection and metacognition, right? Why are we using this or this type of assessment? This assessment modality usually ask yourself, right? Why do I usually do it this way? Um, how uh, do assessment modalities affect uh, the, uh, the 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 space in my classroom? Um, oftentimes. You know, having a game about an assessment like this, a game about assessment, innovation and assessment like this, uh, makes people a bit uncomfortable, uh, right? Because assessments are usually thought of as something very serious. People feel a bit uncomfortable being um, assessed about their assessment methods in such a playful manner. But the thing is, this is not a hundred percent serious uh, it is meant to be playful to generate discussion but this just speaks to the fact that um people have a very deeply held beliefs about assessments evaluations what they are and uh, there you go so you always have to have a very um welcoming and playful attitude when you propose neo as a game I actually i was the first one and um, to say that i didn't want any points when we're talking about you know good points bad points i was really not interested in that when guillaume was uh, mentioning it but in the end they convinced me while we're working on uh, game mechanics um, i was convinced because some teachers uh, are resistant to the idea of educating points, right? Um, but we tell them, well, actually, if you grade your students, that's what you have to do. That's what you do when you assess students, when you evaluate students. So that's what we're going to do in the game. It really um, challenges people in their habits, in their in their concerns, in their but but you always have to make sure that the space in which you play the game is one of uh, uh, collaboration, playfulness, etc., and discussion, dialogue. There are very relevant things that come up on assessments um, as this uh, vote phase takes place. Um, yes, exactly, exactly. Um, so sorry if you hear my daughter, she's crying a bit. Uh, we just had a new baby. So one of the um, places where this can really uh, bear fruits is when people actually start reflecting on their whole practice and uh, start reflecting on this and sharing about their whole practice. Sometimes it's hard to bring all the people back, bring their focus back to the game and uh, continue with the game when they are um, when they start reflecting, but it, it just means that the game uh, worked well, actually. So the point is uh, to really be able to say why you think that this or this proposal is innovative or not and to be able to self-assess. Um, here we have the learner cards. So these are um, meant uh, to help put an end to the game actually. Um, I, so it's already, it depends on the points obtained, the number of cards to be turned over depends on the points obtained, and uh, as the more people you include,
So actually, time determines when the uh, when the uh, game ends, and so the learner cards that uh, they um are turned during the voting phase if you don't have a lot of points you don't have to turn over uh, many learner cards so if you're very innovative uh, people you will have to turn over many learner cards and uh, those you will have to take into account in your next um assessment uh, designs so so what were the learner cards uh, involvement, uh, engagement. So these uh, are characteristics of the students that you have to take into account. Um, oftentimes we don't take into account the specific characteristics of our learnings, but uh, the characteristics of the learners should be taken into account when you design assessments as well. It is an added difficulty for the people who had the most uh, points. And so now uh, regarding benefits and value added, uh, well, for teacher training, you can uh, switch slides, uh, Fred. What we uh, realized is that when we launched a game in February last year, there was a lot of people already using it and were very uh, surprised, positively surprised uh, of what the game could offer. What was reported to us is that it really prompted discussions regarding assessment design. It really allowed people to have a dialogue to discuss uh, assessments. And if you did that uh, during teacher planning day, for example, um, people could actually speak about the, the game and say, are we applying what we learned during the game, what we, what we said during the game uh, as we're designing this assessment, et cetera, et cetera. And it really brings out people's creativity Oftentimes, uh, teachers are surprised. They say, oh, I could do that. I could do that in my classroom. And often uh, other colleagues will, see, will say, well, of course you could. We could do it together, as a matter of fact. And so often teachers will start developing assessments together collaboratively. And um, it is more committing also when people start thinking this way, when they start thinking about innovation, they take more risks and then they acquire some knowledge about assessment design, right? And even though this is just a game, you know, some people don't want to start playing a game and they really have their doubts regarding the usefulness or the relevance of the exercise. And um, oftentimes people would come in with their arms crossed and in the end they would actually start participating, right? And uh, we had one person, one player who said, you know, I don't know anything about assessments. Uh, what is this? What is the objective? What is what is an objective? I don't know. I don't do assessment design, but actually the other players would, would explain to her. So it was um, learning through um, peers, so peer teaching, peer learning, uh, very useful. And there is always this perspective of um, improvement. We found that it facilitated uh, the learning of certain assessment um, modalities. Um, and uh, it's not always us who take the board and host the first uh, game for people for a certain group sometimes it's just e but sometimes it's easier if we come and we explain it the first time and we host the first uh, game um, because it's less boring for people they don't have to go through the leaflet of instructions etc cetera, etc cetera. but people can actually set the game up independently and uh, other people can host the games um so um, now, regarding how teachers learn to evaluate, what we see is that oftentimes teachers participate and learn that they should learn to um, design uh, assessments, right? And where it really helps them learn to uh, assess is that it clarifies certain concepts um, it facilitates uh, the uh, 
the adaptation of different uh, learning activities. It also helps you um, detect what the limits are for certain learning activities or assessment activities, right? Um, because uh, teachers, as they speak, will realize that some uh, aspects of assessments uh, bother them, bother them all, or they find that some um, assessments, some elements are very instrumental, on the contrary, and they need to always be included. So um, we could imagine that a teacher could play even with uh, their students regarding his own assessment choices to open up the discussion regarding how he could adapt his assessment methods better to uh, the students' learning styles, to their expectations, so it can really uh, create a very interesting space for discussion. This can be done in uh, any type of class, uh, in large groups uh, or small groups, small seminars, whatever the discipline. Uh, actually, when I was seeing the undergrad class, um, when I was teaching, okay, so I used it in, a, in an undergrad, undergrad class um, in the teaching department. Uh, I did it uh, to teach the students about assessment uh, methods, right? Um, these students uh, got back to me uh, and said that they wanted to have uh, the game, to purchase a game. They wanted to play Neo with their colleagues in their new um, work environment. And it brought up also this whole um, emotional aspect, affective aspect, oftentimes linked to assessments that is sometimes is more negative, right? So um, it was very good to have a game um, to uh, to break this negative, this negative attitude that oftentimes we have towards assessments. Um, yes, indeed, indeed. And uh, also collaboration is uh, a key aspect of this uh, game, actually, because you can bring teachers from different disciplines together. And uh, this is very rich. They enrich one another. They uh, feed each other's a reflection. And sometimes some methods are very... Um, uh, are, 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 are very um, often used in some departments, but not in others. And when you see what they're doing in the next department, you can ask yourself when well, you're not using this or this tool, this or this design, this or this method, right? So it is a very, um, it is a very fruitful to uh, include people from different departments and disciplines. And there is this type of uh, um, climate of of helping one another that that arises from playing the game um, you know, just uh, seeing each other in the hallway, sometimes we won't have the same type of discussion as when we're sitting around a table and we get into problem solving mode together. They're not real problems, right? It's completely imaginary. The um, assessment that you need to propose sometimes is, is very far-fetched, right? Or it might even be funny, but in the end, it really helps you be prepared to tackle real problems. So um, colleagues will sit around the table and they're right away in problem solving mode and it really enables them to um, start working in collaboration with one another. So uh, when we uh, had um, pedagogical advisors work, uh, played the game actually, the reaction that we got is at last that we have a tool that helps us center the assessment methods on the learner. We have a tool that will allow us to tackle this issues, these issues with the teachers. Some uh, pedagogical advisors uh, don't even use the board. They don't even use the instructions included in the game. They just take the cards and play with the teacher, just to, like interact with them and, and, and actually adapt the the materials included in the game to whatever they need to get done with teachers. So it is a way of uh, introducing a discussion with teachers um, who might want to um, design some assessments in a certain way but don't know how to do it. And uh, also, uh, NEO allows you to use cards uh, depending on the needs of the person that you're assisting. So now, um, evaluation reports. 
Oh, no, actually, so the relation that you have with the assessments, right? Um, you can really uh, vary the type of uh, assessments that you are offering to your students. Um, and the playful dimension of the game enriches a reflection. What we see is that teachers at the end of a game session uh, really want to speak about assessments. They, 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 they feel like talking about assessments. They're like, oh, I really want to change the way that I assess things, my assessment designs. Uh, I want to go out and take uh, this training about assessment design. Uh, I want to think about this again, whatever, whatever. And it's something that they weren't thinking about anymore in their practice, right? So it is really inspiring people to um, acquire new knowledge and uh, develop new practices. It allows people also to share uh, their difficulties. They talk about their uh, difficulties regarding assessment design, assessment outcomes, and the players end up really getting caught in the game and they're just like smiler, even the people who are not convinced to start with. You know, we have some skeptical players sometimes, but they're convinced very easily. There is a whole uh, feedback um, dynamic uh, that is very useful as well. They encourage each other, they help each other. That is these are all things that we're able to observe uh, during game sessions. And what brings us to more research now uh, as we observe um, players as they play the game. Um, actually, Frederick is writing his thesis on this. And at our organization also, we set up a research project involving all uh, teachers. It is... Um, so the game really becomes a field for research. Um, if you buy the game, automatically you will receive the instructions to participate in a research project. And perhaps if Frédéric, you want to uh, mention something about your thesis. Yes, of course, I always have time to uh, talk about my thesis. Um, honestly, it's a thesis that is very stimulating. It helps me to have a more scientific and grounded um idea of what's happening with this game right um oftentimes assessment practices are stagnating very hard to change um especially in a post secondary uh setting where you know, you need to evaluate people to grant scholarships, to grant access to certain programs, et cetera, et cetera. Sometimes this setting is very rigid. So we don't have um, a lot of time to meet teachers, uh, to meet teachers in a context where they feel comfortable changing evaluation assessment modalities. We have a few tools that teachers are already relying on to modify their um, assessment methods, but uh, the the assessment culture um, is an intermediary space where uh, the normal, uh, the usual uh, criteria or Where the usual, where the usual uh, criteria for assessments, where the usual contingencies for assessment are 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 uh, interrupted, and uh, teachers can really uh, experiment with new practices. So, um, Jeanne Forest said that she has seen the game, she has manipulated the game, but she didn't see the instructions to access the research project. Is that because she bought it too early? Well. Perhaps she bought it before we included this leaflet there, but she can just write to us and we'll send her all the documents and the consent forms. It is very simple. We try to make it as easy as possible. Um, so there you go. All right. And Eric Riendo Fontaine is asking if you have a YouTube chain or a blog that presents uh, for example, videos of games that were played or where there would be Q&As. Uh, is that available? No, but it is a very good idea, actually. Well, we have the Cleva. We have the Opieva website, but we don't have a blog. But that could be an idea because we could document uh, game sessions that way. So good idea.
good idea and I'm gonna look at it and we'll put a man on it. Um all right, and would a remote playing possibility be eventually be possible? Uh, she works in innovative uh, practices at the Université de Sherbrooke. Well, the uh, same reason why we didn't do a video game and we did a board game instead is the answer here, basically. It's a question of money, budget, funds. If you do a... If you all participate in the research on NEO, perhaps we'll be able to get some subsidies and we'll be able to uh, launch an online platform, right? Or a, a remote uh, digital platform. I would say no for now, because if right now it's a question of money. And for now, the cards is something simple enough for us to actually manage, but we would have to hire an external firm other than uh, Creo. Um, we're not excluding this possibility in the future, but it would be um, very costly. We're working on the second game, though. There is something very interesting in doing this in person, um, I have to say, though, because it brings people to work together in person, to be present together in the same room. But we will think about it. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, Frédéric. Um, perhaps you could play... Oh, she says that she's going to try and play the board game with some people being remote, and then she'll, she'll tell you how it works. Actually, you know what? We did do a remote uh, session, game session, with uh, participants in France, and they went around, they were around a table, and we hosted the session remotely. So they were around the same table, but we were hosting it remotely. Um, every player could have their own board game. Um, that wouldn't tell that every player would need to obtain their own copy of the game. Well, perhaps, though, Catherine, if you have the the box, I'm not going to tell you to copy the images because that would uh, that would go against intellectual property. But there would be a way to use the supplements, or there would be a way to create pedagogical material around the game to provide a somewhat similar experience. You know, like use the initial material provided by Neo to create something that could look like a hybrid or remote game. But just, just tell us how it works when you do it. Now, Catherine Vaillant also uh, says, do you recommend that a first session and be guided by a person who already knows the game, for example, yourselves? Yes, we do recommend that um, the person who hosts the game already knows it. Uh, for example, myself, Edith, Alexandre, and Frédéric, were, the four of us were all sharing the hosting task, but I um, can reassure you that you play once and after that you don't need it anymore, okay? So that is quite nice and it allows us to meet you to be there in person or to, you know, um, establish establish ties with you, but then after that, you're you're completely independent. Uh, after one game, you know it well. You can also ask your pedagogical advisors, right? If you, that could fall under their job description. There are some pedagogical advisors that have already played in NEO. Uh, it could be your uh, pedagogical advisor. Um, we could organize some uh, retreats, right, for pedagogical advisors also, perhaps, so that they can go and spread knowledge of this game and be in charge of hosting for their own institution. Um, so uh, there are some questions about where to acquire the game. I think that you're going to mention that in a few min minutes, right? Uh, Mr. Terry is asking, I don't know it is a tabletop simulator, a possible platform to uh, digitize the uh, game at a reduced cost. I don't know what a tabletop simulator is, so I wouldn't be able to say. Um, well, but it seems to be a very good question, though. Perhaps bring some precisions in the uh, chat section. Actually, I just did lightning research, uh, lightning search. Uh, you can buy this platform online, then you can access a variety, a whole array of games there. Well, that's a very nice lead, a good hint. So we're going to look into it. Uh, thank you very much, Jérémy. To create your own game. Uh, OK, that's what I thought. Actually, we could perhaps. Try it. We'll have to look into it. 
Now we'll end with our presentation. We can uh, carry on with questions in a few minutes. There's only um, two slides left actually. So um, it is very easy to use. It is not free anymore, but it's uh, made available to anyone who wants to use it. We know uh, for the moments that it is used in the following areas, engineering, biology, mathematics, education, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we uh, know also that the following institutions all use um, the game. It's been sent to uh, institutions even in Africa, in France, uh, so many, many of them. And we're working on an English translation for 2024, 2025. And um, so the 51st, uh, the 51st uh, games that were produced were provided for free, but it is very, um, it is a very expensive game to produce. Uh, you'll see, you know, it is a real, real game. It is professionally produced. Um, and so we um, obtain authorization from the ministry to now uh, sell it for a certain price uh, to cover the costs of impression of printing. So uh, you access uh, our website and then you can order the game. You can pick it up. We can... Uh, uh, send it to you, we can deliver it to you, or if you uh, sign up for a um, hosted session, then we can bring it to you uh, on the day of the session. And uh, when we went to France for the big conference, uh, we all left with two games in our suitcases. Uh, so I think it's 120, 130 uh, dollars per game, including um, pickup or delivery costs. And we use this money to to pay for the next um, the next prints. So the next series of games to be produced. So we do print it uh, quite often because it's working very well, fortunately. And here, um, so this is our website, our website, and this is our email address at Opieva, so you can write to us there. Pierre Mondar asked, uh you to put the links in the chat please we already placed one in the chat but you will also receive the document that contains the links and um, by email so your next game our next game will be on a assessment biases and it will be a character game it is a role play so you're going to have assessors teachers uh, students and you will have to take into account um biases you know you will have to work on your biases uh, and you know uh, it is uh, a game where there are characters, right? Uh, it's not like Dungeons Dragons, but it's more like Clue, for example, um, where there are some uh, common objectives. It is a collaborative uh, game. So you don't have... You have to collectively address some biases in order to meet your objectives, your goals, and this will be the uh, mechanics behind the game. Um, the game will require another type of investment, uh, perhaps not so cognitive, but uh, it will be even more playful. It will really be a role-playing game, right? Um, I want to also answer someone uh, here who's asking if we could make the produced or the created assessments available, you know, like the outcomes of our game sessions. Could we make them available to others? Actually, we're looking at creating a platform where players can actually feed, where they can actually, you know, include um, their the assessments that they created while playing the game, but we have to create like a whole model for them to be able to transfer um, their their output onto the web. So we thought about it and we think that it's a very, very good idea and we're trying to implement it. 
really, it is extremely interesting. I have a very playful side, so I love it when people um, present the game to me. And I would have used it for sure if I were still teaching. Um, what it allows us to do is have many have many different outcomes. You know, you play once, you play a second time. It's never going to be the the same outcomes. Uh, and do you have anything that you want to add, Diane and Frédéric? No, apart from the fact that perhaps I would send add a slide with references because perhaps this is just like a different version of the final PowerPoint. I can send you um, another version where there's going to be references or I send you this version with just an added slide apart. You can just send it to me and I'll add it and I'll, I'll, send, I'll make sure that I share everything with our participants. So I wish you all a, a nice day. Your webinar was full of sun and there is also a beautiful sun outside. So I thank you immensely for your presentations. I'm very happy to have met you. And you could also be at the AQPC conference. You could present there, right? I don't know if you've already uh, decided to offer a conference there, but it would be a very nice platform to do so. Uh, perhaps it could be next year because, okay, because everything is closed now for this year, but perhaps next year. And uh, uh, we'll keep you informed. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for participating, to the participants, for speakers, for presenting their work. And uh, I'll keep the chat open for a, a second to let people write their, their thanks, their, their comments, but you're all free to go. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.